In this video we're going to look at printing a 15mm vehicle for wargaming. 3D printers have become more capable and more affordable. This is great news for wargamers. Printing your own miniatures is a great idea, but can I pull it off in practice? Let's have a go at printing this M577 APC in 15mm. Can I do it? Keep watching and find out. Before we get started, just a quick warning. I'm not an expert. This is my first attempt at printing a 3D model, and spoilers, it shows. This is also not a tutorial. I will quickly go through the process printing this model, but I don't know enough to teach you about 3D printing. And that's not the point of this video. My final warning will be that the UV resin is toxic. More toxic than we realised. The gases are harmful to the lungs, and the resin is toxic on the skin. Gloves and masks are necessary. Don't ask me how I know. Santa bought the Fog of War household a 3D printer for Christmas. However, with work and bushfires and whatnot, this week is our first chance to check it out. The printer we bought is an Anycubic Photon Mono. This is a resin printer that uses 405 nanometer UV resin to print solid objects. Resin technology uses a bath of resin into which the build plate descends. A UV laser in the base of the printer cures a slice of resin onto the build plate, and then the build plate raises and the process repeats again until the model is finished. This technology is different from FDM or filament printing, which uses a spool of plastic wire that's melted and extruded through a print head, much like ink through a traditional inkjet printer. From what I could tell from our research, resin printers achieve smoother surface detail, but FDM printers are good for larger prints. This makes resin good for small miniatures and FDM good for larger pieces and terrain. But again, I'm no expert. That's just the general tenor of what we saw online. Anyway, let's print a miniature. The first step is to find a 3D model or STL file to print. STL stands for Stereolithography, and is the standard file format for printable 3D mesh objects. You can buy STL files, but Thingiverse is a free library of 3D objects that you can access. There are others, but Thingiverse is a good place to start. Here's a collection of 15mm or 1 100th scale modern tanks and vehicles. The first page has some Land Rovers, UAZ Jeeps and M109 SP artillery. Next to some Strikers and Cougars, as well as cars and trucks. Then there's some LAVs, BTRs and LVTPs. Then T-55s, BMPs, Centurions and more Strikers. The fifth page has BTR-152s, BRDMs, M1 Abrams and M2 Bradleys. But this last page has BTR-70s, T-64s and the vehicle I'm looking for, the M577. The M577 is a command version of the M113 armoured personnel carrier. There are a few M113 variants here. If we scroll down to the Thing Files button, this will show us all the file groups for this collection. These are STL files for all the vehicles we just saw in the preview photos. Scrolling down, we get to the M113A1 Part 1 zip file. A quick click and a download, and we have the STL file we need. Here's a preview of the downloaded M577 STL file. You can see that it's an enlarged body M113 APC. The level of detail looks pretty good. I'm not sure how that's going to translate through to the resin print, but that's a good start. However, we can't just print this. The STL file needs to be prepared before we can go to print. I'm dragging the STL file into Cheetubox. The gridded rectangle here represents the build plate, the metal printing plate surface the resin will stick to during the printing process. I've rotated the model to sit on the plane of the build plate. Objects need to be supported during the print process. Because the object prints in slices, any unsupported overhangs will start off not being attached to the rest of the model. This is called an island. Islands will be cured but would just end up floating in the resin or stuck to the bottom of the resin reservoir. To get around that problem, I'm going to angle the model up 45 degrees on the build plate, and then add some supports. Angling the model is recommended, no idea why. Some videos suggest a 45 degree slant to one side as well. 
I'm just going to do this for now. If we click the Supports tab, we get access to the Supports tools. I already have this set up to create a raft, a thick resin base that strongly fixes to the build plate. It's also set to raise the 3D model 4mm up off the build plate. Giving some separation here is good. Something between 4 and 10mm is suggested. Again, this is just based on our reading and the YouTube videos we've watched. Let's add some supports. These are little pillars of resin that print along with the model to support the model and prevent any islands. I'm using the automatic tool that analyzes the model and adds supports where it thinks it's necessary. It knows what it's doing and I don't, so we'll go with that. There are tools for you to add or subtract supports if required. Tilting the model up, you can see how the supports are anchoring the model to the raft and supporting it during the print process. But we're not finished yet. The next step is to slice the supported STL file ready for the printer. For that, I'm going to use the software that came with our Photon printer. After opening the STL file in here, I activate the Slice tool and it slices the file and saves the sliced model out as a .pwmo format file. The slicer calculates where the resin needs to be hit by the laser to create each layer or slice of the model on the build plate. Once the model is sliced, you can move the slider on the side here to see how the model will print. Starting from the raft, then the supports, and then to the model itself. Each slice adds to the one beneath it until it builds up the entire model. This isn't a fast process. This model says it will take about 3.5 hours and take about 27 milliliters of resin. I'm going to transfer the sliced file over to the printer and set it going. This isn't a tutorial, so I'm not going to cover setting up the printer, adding resin, or selecting the file. I'm not an expert. There are plenty of videos online about how to do that for your particular printer. Once the print is happening, you can watch the progress on the LCD panel on the printer. This shows you the laser pattern for each layer, the percentage complete, and the time remaining. Quite useful, really. You can't see what's happening on the build plate in the early stages. The edges of the resin reservoir block the view. You can just see the build plate dipping into the resin and raising back up. That changes a bit as the print progresses. It is now a couple of hours later and we're at 87% complete. There's about 22 minutes still to go. Now the build plate rises higher out of the resin bath and we can see the raft, supports and the M577 model taking shape. While the print is finishing, let's revisit resin and safety. Firstly, the resin smells disgusting. That's good because it is toxic, so make sure you wear a mask working with this material. While the model is printing, the cover keeps the smell down. It's also tinted to stop sunlight curing the resin before the print is finished. The uncured resin is also toxic and irritates the skin. Wear gloves. Nitrile gloves are recommended. These don't react with the resin. Once the resin is cured, it is safe to handle, but before then, use caution. Any IPA alcohol or water you use to wash the model is also contaminated. The best advice is to set these in the sun to cure, then filter the cured resin out with a sieve or paper filter before disposal. Again, I'm not an expert. I learnt some of these lessons the hard way while doing this. Once our print is complete, the build plate raises up and you can see the finished model. The resin is uncured and the surface is still soft at this stage, so be careful when dismounting and washing it. The model is also covered in liquid resin residue that needs to be washed off. Then the print itself needs to be cured. This can be done in the sun or in a UV curing station. Here the finished kit has been washed with 90% isopropyl alcohol. The IPA washes off any liquid resin on the model's surface. The model is still uncured. You should still be using gloves at this point. Be careful not to leave marks or fingerprints on the model. The M577 model is still attached to its supports. You can remove these at this stage before curing or leave them on to assist handling and snap or clip them off later. It's up to you. I removed them before curing. Apparently a dip in hot water helps remove the supports more easily. UV resin cures in sunlight or under a UV light source. Luckily in Australia we have lots of sunshine, so we'll use that. Here's the finished print. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I thought it was possibly a tiny bit under scale. 
I'd probably print it slightly larger next time, but it isn't far off. There are some marks on the side of the hull. These are my fault, from some over-enthusiastic tong work before it was fully cured. This will be easy enough to fill and sand before priming and painting, but I'll use more care in future. I'd probably leave the supports on next time to aid handling as well. The resin gives a pretty smooth finish. You can see some print lines on the resin material, but much less than for FDM. There is a little bit of shrinkage or warpage on flat surfaces. In wargaming terms, I'd probably say it's the modelling equivalent of a well-cast resin piece. That's the printing process, but where does 3D printing fit into our hobby? The M577 is a single vehicle I wanted to use for my Team Yankee Australians in the company HQ. If there was a 15mm one I could buy in resin or plastic, I'd probably have done that. I wouldn't print lots of any one vehicle. If I needed a lot of something, I'd buy a commercially available product over printing my own. But for low numbers, one-off or unique vehicles that aren't available elsewhere, this is a great alternative. The other vehicle here is an M548, a cargo-carrying variant of the M113. Again, I only need one or two of these, just for flavour. Does 3D printing have a wider application in wargaming? Are home 3D printers going to put Battlefront and Games Workshop out of business? I don't think so. I spoke to a 3D file vendor in the UK and he said the issue is unauthorised distribution. If you sell a 3D file, there's nothing to stop that person giving it to friends or even turning around and selling it themselves. But if you try and factor that into the initial cost of the 3D file, it makes them unaffordable. Like so many things, the technology has outpaced the social and business infrastructure to make it viable. So it's going to be a while until 3D printing makes a significant impact on traditional model businesses. At least that's my opinion. But what do I know? I'm just some guy on the internet. Anyway, I was happy with my first print. I learnt a lot and the errors I made were minor and fixable. That's a win in my book. I am considering printing up a troop of four M113 AS4s for my Australians. I know the timeline's wrong for Team Yankee, but it's proving hard to resist. Thanks for watching. See you next time.